Welcome to the Miami Beach Jewelry and Watch Show. Welcome to the Miami Beach Jewelry and Watch Show. Welcome from Miami. This is the Antique Show. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's your best. That's your best. That's your best. Let's go, man. Welcome to the original Miami Beach Antique Show. This place is humongous. One of the best parts I love about the show, outside of doing a whole lot of business, selling a lot of watches and jewelry, is that I get to buy a lot of cool shit that you guys see around my office. I'm gonna see if my friends at Antiques Modern are here. Let's go. My friends at Watchbox are here too. I'm gonna go see if I can buy some things from them or sell some things to them. So this show has been a couple of years in the coming because of COVID and because they were remodeling the convention center. It looks like it's somewhat back to full strength, not as big in terms of exhibitors, but uh, you definitely get a lot of cool shit like this. Anybody need a palm tree made out of bronze? I know this guy. We're back. back. How, how are you? I can't complain. That's cool as shit. How much is the Bugatti grill? This is cool. I'm going to come back and see you about this. Just got to go find someone. So this is the type of shit that I like, but... The problem is, when it comes to antiques, they'll ask 7,500 and let it go for two, <laughs> usually. How's it going? Good to see you. Look at that. This is the puzzle one or no? No. no. So in case you guys are wondering where all the cool shit came from, from my office, it came from these guys. About 90% of it. How much is this? Uh, it's 1,200. It's cool. Hold on a second. I got it. Get my fingerprints off of it. That's so cool. Nah, I don't need it. Are you familiar with this guy though? No. His name is Long Bin Chen. He's like one of the hardest artists to buy. Not terribly old, but it's all carved phone books. All of his works are done in various carved periodicals. This I'll take. Okay. This I'll take. Unless you want to do just 4,500 done. I, I can't do it. Don't want to do it. Okay, so let's do this okay. at 38. Yeah. I'll leave it here for now. I'll grab it later. I'm going to get one of those card things. It. This I want to think about. I, I love the concept. I, I'm, not, I'm not just a fan of the face, I guess. Right. Big shout out to my friends at Mantiques Modern. And then Watchbox was displaying there as well. So I went over to see if I can pick up some deals. What do you want for that? We bought it in an auction in okay. Japan. Wrong buckle. Wrong buckle? Yeah. It's pink. It's yellow. What color is this buckle? Yellow or rose? Red. It's rose? It is red. Wow, I am, I am blind. I need my glasses. Uh, 160. Retail was 500 and 583, something. I think. Yeah. Papers? Uh, yep. Take that back. The Alinghi and, and the Rolex. Papers on this? Can't see. Hey, the uh, rose gold Alinghi service with papers. I mean, it's like mint because I just said yellow with nowhere. Talk to Dalbert. Michael, I'm going to take this with me. Give me yes, sir. I'm going to show it to Adrian. Goodbye. Let's go to 5180. 67. Okay, no papers. I didn't. I'm sure he'll let it go for 65. I can maybe trade him for something. And this, I think, is a buy. 75 and 60. At the Skoka. 135. Что с ним можно поменять? 135. Very beneficial to be multilingual. Uh, oftentimes, when we're at these trade shows, there are a lot of eyes and ears, and oftentimes we don't want people to hear the pricing that we're discussing. But without going into a big translation on this, we talked about the fact that the two watches I took from Watchbox were a little bit too high for us. We wanted to get the price down, so we we're trying to figure out perhaps a trade either via a longer triple split that we had or the AP Cabinet 5. Get out of the longer triple split. Uh, how about the uh, Zeitwerk striking time? Смотри, нам эти стоят 100, нам эти стоят 125. Yeah. Здесь мы хотим... Hey, Dome. Здесь мы хотим yeah. платить сколько, ты сказал? Я хочу... He'll know. What's this worth? You don't have to buy it. I'm trying to buy it. 75. Okay, that's, what exactly. say, that's what we say, that's what we say. 75, 60, 135. I'm done. Roman. I have faith in you. I have all my faith. I trust you with my life. So a lot of the times when we're at trade shows and things start to slow down a little bit, Roman gets bored and he likes to walk around and buy stuff that we don't need. Like literally all the time. In this case, it was actually two really good pieces that we could always use. So kudos Roman on a good buy. I'd like to make you an offer you can't refuse. I have one of these. I, I know, can you can corner the market. This is aging for me, this is aging for you. And I figure it's a fair trade. No. But thank you. What are you thinking? It's cabinet five, retail 583,000. Yeah, no, I know what it it's is. It's similar to that. Yeah. I think you own them for 135. And you get to beat me up on a bunch of other inventory I brought for you. Those skeletons that are becoming hot as shit, I used to have 40 of them at 30 cents on a dollar. 
No, I can't. Anthony's scoring in the market, he's got two. <laughs> you know what's funny? How powerful that is? Everybody's making fun of him, making fun of him, but I see other dealers now following suit, trying to buy him up, put him up online, and this, that, and the other, and literally saying the same thing he said. Oh, it's more affordable, it's still a hell of a watch. The design came before the Royal Oak. Like, it's, it's insane how that works. So Anthony, the person people love to hate most, but he didn't reinvent the wheel. He did exactly what I've told you guys numerous times. He saw that there was not many out on the market, bought up a few, and lo and behold, I'm walking around the trade shows and people are asking me $80,000 for a rose gold GP skeleton, a watch I used to sell around the $40,000 mark. I don't want to do anything with that. I have one already. Okay, so then will you take an offer on that? I'm always listen. 75. No, thank you. It's probably what you paid. Yes, exactly. I would do 80. I tell you what, you'll come over, you'll see what I got. Maybe we'll work something, we'll something out. Though. I'll got yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I was like, where's the celebrity? Sorry. What's up, brother? What's going What's on? Where's your booth? 1431, right down there. Yeah. Let's go. What are we doing? I want to see something. You don't have to go. It's a right. Follow her. I bumped into Adam first thing in the morning, and he said there are some pieces that I might be interested in. So I went over to check them out. Oh. Naked also. Uh, how much is the platinum? Tell me where you need to be. Is it full set? No, they're, I told you, they're all naked. The uh, guy did, the guy, naked. we bought them all, oh, and the they, package? yeah, and he didn't send any papers. Figure out where you need to be. Okay. All right. Well, 17, I'll take it. I can't, dude. I can't. Like, I can't. If you buy that, I'm making seven hundred fifty dollars. At eighteen? Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Get some extra links when Where should I be pricing that blue one naked? Like low forties kind of thing? Yeah. Let me take a look. I mean, the cheapest one online is like forty-seven. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. I know it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but, you know. Did you look on Corona Twenty Four? I'm just, listen. I don't do Royal Oak Offshores. You know that. I'll take a look like I do Royal Oaks, not Offshores, because I have girly and wrists, and I can never wear them. True story. Yeah, 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 Adam. I also have girly wrists, and you know what? It doesn't stop me from wearing Offshores or even T threes at forty-eight millimeters. Here, you go, Adam. Here's an Offshore that you can wear. You know what they say about small wrists? Small watches. Mm -hmm. Grab the blue also. Watch it, Thank you. Yeah. So we're asking 45, but you tell me where you need to be. You know? That was a good price, and we did end up buying both of the pieces. Jordan, yeah. Jordan, can I see the Please. The Grand Prix? Uh, Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Oh wow. Wait, did you get that on camera? No. That I knew of Royal Oak Offshore I model that like she didn't? I. Oh. oh. <laughs> He's never gonna let me forget this. Because oh. I saw it from here, but you know, I'm getting old and my eyes are not that great anymore. I thought you were like 20, you just turned 26. I did. Okay, so <laughs> what's the problem? The bezel is... It's not bad. I've seen way worse. I mean, I've seen worse. Definitely not for us. Last time this happened, this kid was taken advantage of greatly. Do you know who this is? This the sharpest buy in the world. This, this is the sharp. I, I was this is made the, a big sale. This, last this, time this, this, this is the sharpest buy in the world after me. In like five. Because I'm actually able to sell to him. The reason I said Alex was taken advantage of last time is because Alex attended one of the IWJG shows. I wasn't there. This was in Vegas, and Michael came over to the booth and started buying stuff up from Alex and beat the crap out of him on prices. And he gave a few things a bit too cheap. But hey, guess what? That's the only way to learn. Remember what I said, guys. This business, we're bulletproof underwear. Do you want some of these, uh, like, older offshores? I have this one. I have the yellow one. Ladies is cheap. Ladies, no. The older day date is how much? Sold out. Which one? The one right there. What is this one? Yeah. So here right now. And this is cheap, too. Like, really cheap. I know, I know you think it's ugly, but it's cheap. It is ugly. I, I just bought that. So Michael, I paid I paid seventy five one for the longer. Thank you. Seventy eight thousand, you can have it. It's full set. Mm, don't think so, but I have to check. Uh, it has papers. It has papers. Sure, we have a box. No, a box we don't. Good luck. And this guy, I think is a good price, twenty two five. And then I have the owl too. Yes and yes. This one I'll sell you for seventeen five. Yes. Sixteen five. Yes. <laughs> Do you want the brown dial turbine, Royal Oak Chrono? Uh, You've never seen this. I actually just looked at that. Because, it's, because it's, 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 it's super rare. They're, they made like a handful. I've been asking 60. I will go for you 54. How much is it? No. That's, that's exactly what I paid. Michael, do 53, I'll give it to you. 52, 55, I'll do. 
and that's me making three grand because I paid 52. With the winding box, the whole. Hold on, let's see. That's the killer. Because it's the nicest winding box. Hold on, don't we have an extra winding box? No, it has box, yes, papers, yes. Yes, I know, but it's a regular box, mm. but we may have a winding box at all. 55. Yes. 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 Bad it. Travel. How about this lovely number? This lovely number, this lovely number, this lovely number. I think I own this. this is, Michael, this is 2500 16.5? Why didn't I say 17? Fuck. No, I still would have said 16. I know. They don't have anything to the price here. Really Nothing. Not, everything's cool. Everything's cool. Yes. Did you see how much you bought? A <laughs> guy walks into a shop on 47, so I get a phone call. Right. He's like, hey, what do you want to do? This watch, this, not, but it's only watch. I'm like, okay. I'm like, no box, no papers. I decide to lowball him. 65,000. I figured the guy, because he, he brought that along with a bunch of like old Rolexes. Uh, from Midtown goes, I think I'll make it work for you. Call him back, call him back 10 minutes later, yeah, it's stolen. I'm like, ah. If something is too good to be true, it usually is. I get a phone call from a dealer in New York, guy walks in with a bunch of old Rolexes and one watch that wasn't really fitting, which, which, which was the MBNF Perpetual. Feeling the guy out, I realized I could probably buy this watch very, very cheap, or well, at least I can try. So I made a very low ball offer because the watch was naked, i.e. no box, no papers, and thinking, I have room to come up. And that watch ended up being stolen. Therefore, obviously, myself nor the guy in New York bought it. All right. Um, I'll get back to you on those. Uh, I'll keep wondering. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, day one started not too shabby. Watchbox making a significant purchase. We were nearing about a million dollars in sale just in the morning of the first day. So it's going to be a good show. shows are humongous. If you were to walk from one end to another, it would take you in excess of 20 minutes to get back to your booth. So therefore, the solution was to scoot around. They see me rolling. And those things are fast. There he goes. <laughs> I'm next. <laughs> I swear to God. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a felony. Yo, they're going to charge me, bro. Get back. He's breaking his own basket. He's not breaking your shit. Yeah, it's enough. Uh, it's not going. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, pull up your pants. <laughs> yes, I need to drive around the whole track. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out luxury watches. Bizarre, luxury, luxury, <laughs> luxury watches. <laughs> luxury bizarre DBA luxury watches. So I had a client that I met on Instagram right before I came to the show. He uh, had a specific Richard Mille that he wanted to get the most money for. So being that we were at the show and he lived in Miami, I told him to stop by and uh, check out some watches as well as give us his watch on consignment because I think we could sell it pretty quickly. <laughs> hey, I have Mohammed here with your You want to come over? Uh, all right. Alex, he's going to come over here now. Thank you so much, man. Yo, I'm kind of excited by that grab bag we just bought. I know, we should make out like a champ. I don't know. I, you know, it's really unknown, but there's money there. I drive by a booth of a dealer I do a lot of business with. He's like, are you interested in old Rolex parts? And I said, of course. Well, he bought out a store that used to be a Rolex dealer. And there was a box, I kid you not, probably the size of a refrigerator. I peeked inside the box. I literally looked at it for 20 seconds. I said, how much for the whole box? I called Adam over and said, we're buying this box for 30 grand. Adam took one peek and said, let's go. You guys got to see what we just bought. What Roman and I just what bought. Is, what is this? Bought it's, it's, a mystery, it's a surprise. It's a surprise. It's a, we bought a mystery box. We literally what? just like rolled the dice. <laughs> It feels like a side quest mission in like a game. Come on, Mohammed. <laughs> Field trip. This is it? What, are you finding more stuff? Yeah. Dude. No way. Wait, wait, there's pictures, there's frames also. Wait, where are the picture frames? See, you see in the corner over there? Like there's a bunch of those, like old dealer displays. Look at that. There's stands. There's Rolex white gloves unused. Hold on. Adam's such a nerd. It's, I'm, I'm like excited. I'm excited. It's like, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. He was excited. What's this Mercedes? There's brochures, Rolex advertising, co-op portfolio 2007. He was really, really excited. What did you pay for this? We paid for everything $27,500. There's more brochures. Oh, wow. You're such a nerd, Adam. Yeah, there's 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 links, there's dials, there's parts. It's gonna take like four days to go through it all. Yeah, that I, that was the first thing I opened up. And so it's a Mariner dial oh, and bezel. Man. There's some like day date dials. Yeah, it's great. Wow, this very is exciting. Fire. 
Thank you, Fred Straub, Incorporated. It's gonna go on my desk. You know why this is cool? Because this is stuff that you can't find anymore. You know, like you can't just like go out and buy or find this stuff. I mean, you can hunt on eBay and forums and stuff, but this is all old stuff, and a lot of the stuff it's that Rolex never sold. It was for ADs and you know, and dealers and stuff like that. I mean, to buy so, all this individually, it would take so much time. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. Interesting buy of the day. Buy. Last year I bought like an awesome mechanical uh, display, like you plugged in and it, like yeah, bent down. Yeah, yeah. So like this is my cool buy of the year. You want to do a little vintage uh, crash course? Let's do it. So while I was over at Adam's booth watching him geek out over this box of Rolex junk, uh, he taught me a thing or two about vintage watches as well. Vintage watches are pretty hard to learn, so no better place to start than Adam Menta. Is this the infamous paddock? That... So it's a 5711 Tiffany & Co. Can I see that? Yeah, of course. That is sick. Sick, right? You know, and I think there's a tremendous amount of value there considering everybody's like going crazy over like the new Tiffany dial one. You know, so How much is that? 330. 330. Yeah, which is listen, it's a lot more expensive than they I, used to but be. I, but, but I think this is like a lot more special than there. The, and there's uh, none available for sale right now. I don't even know where to start. Where do you start? In vintage. I like to tell people to start with either something simple like a gloss style from the 80s. So like okay. this is a 5513 gloss style that they made throughout the 80s. What is gloss really nice. style? So it's got a lacquer finish as opposed oh. to a matte tile, right. which is matte. Matt. Okay. So, you know, these you could still get at a reasonably affordable price point. Obviously, everything's gone up, right. but you could still get these, let's say, like exactly mid, low mid teens and sometimes even under 10 grand. It just depends on the condition. Right. All of the matte dial stuff, whether it's plastic or sapphire, is all well over 10 grand for anything good. Like, you know, you're mid to high teens. So, like, for example, this is a GMT matte dial from like 1973, uh -huh. uh, unpolished case, perfect condition. And it's a little bit over 20 grand. Oh, they, that's they stop the matte tiles after a certain. Point. So they stop the like, matte I mean, tiles. Yeah, they stop the matte tiles at the end of the 70s. Adam is hands down the most knowledgeable person when it comes to vintage watches. I also tell people just getting into vintage, you could go with something sapphire, call it neo vintage now. Uh, you know, from the 80s, 90s. That still has tritium dials, so it still has nice patina. Something maybe two tone, so it's a little bit cheaper. You know. Uh, Two-tone still really underappreciated, although it's been making a run just like everything else. Yeah, yeah. But younger people are starting to wear it. This used to be like the old man's watch or like the Miami Beach Police. Like all the cops yeah. used to wear two-tone subs back in the day. Uh, now, like younger people are getting into them, yeah. which is great, you know, and I actually wear two-tone as well. You know, I don't yeah. mind it. You could still get two-tones for cheaper than steel, you know? Yeah. And honestly, like sometimes they look better. Yeah, no, look, look fantastic looking watch, yeah. you know? People are overlooking like Tudors also. So like this right. is a, mid-sized Tudor sub okay. that's under $5,000. So it's like the size of a day chest, but it fits well, right. you know, because it's a, a Submariner style watch. In my opinion. Or you could get something um, like this, which is a snowflake. So it's a, they okay. call it, they nickname it the snowflake because of the shape of the hands, but it's a Tudor Submariner from the same era, you know, late 60s, 70s, et cetera. Right. Um, Essentially it's the same watch though, right? And it's the only one that's blue. Like you don't have a Rolex sub from this era that's blue. Yeah. And Tudors have remained steady and consistent. You know, it looks almost identical to a sub, you know, different movements, got an ETA movement, right. but essentially it's, a, it's the same watch, you know, yeah. cause it was made by Rolex. When people ask me like, what's the first starter Rolex to buy? I always say something like this, Explore. where you get, again, Neo Vintage. Right. Doesn't have to be Explorer, but it can be 16570 or 16610 Submariner or something yeah. like that because you can still find them under 10 grand. This one beautiful patina, so it has like a vintagey look, uh -huh. you know, because it's got nice yellow patina, but it's more of a sturdy watch, so it's more something more yeah, modern, yeah. you know? I see it's these something a lot. Like, Right, and these are under 10 grand, you know? Yeah. This one is 8750, you know? Yeah. And you can't get a vintage Explorer for that price. These right. are both well over 20 grand, yeah. you know? I mean, this looks great though. Yeah, like, that exactly. Like white cream. That's what I'm saying. It's like the best of both worlds, yeah. you know, because you get a patina look, like a vintagey look, yeah. but you get a sturdy watch with a sapphire crystal yeah. that you could go swimming with if you wanted yeah. to, and you know? Affordable. And it's affordable. Yeah. Key point. The great thing about vintage is that there's so many brands out there and there's so much stuff. You, know, uh -huh. you could go for a great Speedmaster, which yeah. is a classic watch. There's a whole world of Patek, Vacheron, AP, you know? Right. Uh, JLC, Hoyer, you know, there's so many different things out there. There's something for everybody. It's pretty diverse. Like well, the cool thing about vintage is that every watch is unique. You know, they all have different character. They all age differently, you know, so you're not going to have two watches that are identical. 
You right. know, never. You'll never have two watches that end. Because they're worn. They're not produced anymore. Right. You know, like that watch. Somebody could be in this room. More than one people could be in this room with that same exact watch, the same exact condition. Yeah. But like, no one's going to be in the room with the same exact watch in the same exact condition. Yeah, the same exact watch in the same exact patina or the bezel aged pink like that. Right. Might be similar, but it's not going to be exactly the same. The good stuff's going to continue to go up because yeah. as more people want it, it's harder to find, and the right. real collectors are holding on to their. Sh they're yeah. not selling. Yeah. You know how many watches I've tried to buy throughout COVID because like, oh, everybody needs money. They want to sell COVID. Exactly. Uh, no one wants to sell. They only want to hold on to their watches and they're right. like, can't replace them. Yeah. Can't yeah. get another one. You know? Yeah, that's what it's so, come to. You really can't replace the watches that you have. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm And then you can't replace it at the price point because exactly. you sell it for 15 and then you want to buy it back. Now it's 18, six exactly. months later. These are some of my favorites. Tell me more about the beaches. It was like three different cereals in the early 2000s that they made them. And the funniest part is that like my mom has a pink one that my dad bought for her in 2011 for $11,000. You're kidding. And right. she wears it, she's beat it up, no problem. Yeah. And I'm like, mom, you gotta be careful. That's like a $60,000 watch now. Literally. She's like, ah, yeah. you know? But I think they were really underappreciated for a really long time. Right. Like Rolex didn't make a lot of stuff like this, especially during that era. Like, look at the way the stone aged, it's not even technically a stone, but yeah. look at the way it aged, you know, where it's like lighter on one side and darker on the other. Like, it, you just don't get stuff like that, you know? Like, that's factory original, at least. Usually, you know, people have like weird aftermarket stuff, but... No, this is insane. Yeah. Are these dials, what are these dials made out of? Uh, like Mother of Pearl. Okay. This one's not, that's, what's it called? Uh, oh. Catadonia or Caledonia or something like that? Yeah. So that's Mother of Pearl and that's like... Cats something so else, something, uh, some other, so yeah. yeah. But yeah, awesome. really cool watches, man. Like sure. really, you know, just like unique and cool stuff. There was a guy here all day yesterday who had the, the blue one. And yeah, like he bought uh, it for yeah, like 30 know, grand, yeah. you know, a while ago. And he's like, I don't want to sell it, you know, because they're just, they're I mean, just yeah, there's I nothing like it, it, you know, especially for Rolex. Like you get a black dial or you get a white dial. For them to have made that watch, especially at the time they made it, was something special, you know. And they were really underappreciated for a long time, you know. Yeah. I don't know if the current market value is the true value, if it'll go down, whatever, but they were worth more than they were selling for 10 years ago for 100%. fucking sure. Yeah, so I got to get back to selling people yes. watches who actually want to buy. I actually want to buy. Wow. <laughs> wow, I, I love you, man. Buy. Thank you for stopping buy. by. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you all your help. I'll come See you soon. Back. Peace. Peace. Adam, even though you got really nerdy over that box, thank you very much for giving a quick lesson to Alex on vintage pieces. Every watch dealer should be fairly well-rounded, and I think the time that Alex spent with you was extremely beneficial because when he came back, he was really, really excited because he actually learned a lot. So while Alex was over at Menta's booth learning about vintage watches, promoters of the show wanted to come over and have a little photo shoot with us. What about me? What about my photo? Roman, you are fired. <laughs> Yeah, no, Adrian. Definitely a no in a chain. Mm -mm. And I think we're all set. Are you sure? All set. <laughs> That's great. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And then it was off to the races. They're not so fast and not so furious. Yeah. Ready? How do I do this? Like this? One, two, three. <laughs> oh, the turbo! <laughs> the turbo! The turbo! The turbo! <laughs> Roman says I got a free, I get a free 5980 now because I won the race. So you guys can go ahead and deliver that box and papers. Roman, I get a free 5980. I won the race, right? Yeah, you got it. That was the plan. <laughs> so how the hell is it that two scooters that produce the same five horsepower, how do I lose when Josh is like minimum 95 pounds heavier than me? It was the five kilo chains around Adrian's neck that weighed him down. That's the only reason you won, Josh. Wait, I want to back it up into here. Don't let her Did drive that thing. What? Because yeah. she's going to cause issues. Okay. Think I can back it up? Just parallel park it. Sorry, I'm trying to do a... It's hard to do it without mirrors. Oops. This is too risky now. Yeah. Abort. Abort. I don't just suck. This was a lot harder than I thought. You try reversing without mirrors. Anna, that thing is not hard to drive, Anna. Like, honestly. Are you trying? What's that mean? Yeah. Try that, bro. I'm sure it's fire. Bro, try it. That is. It's like a uh, souffle. 
Sometimes people just bring random food by our booth, so that cake was actually really good. So a very good client dropped off a bunch of pastries for all of us. Uh, desperate times cause for desperate measures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I have to try it right now. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let, let's do it. This is amazing. Right? I didn't get a chance to eat all day, so they were delicious. Two days of the Miami Antique Show. I bought one cool piece of uh, thing from my boys at Antiques Modern. <laughs> number <expensive>. one. <laughs> and so far, we're at about two and a half million of sales. The problem is, is I never placed a bet with Adrian. No, but uh, the show is going wonderful. I think the most special pickup of the show is definitely the 5711, but not any 5711. Hold on. It's a Tiffany. I don't, you're probably not going to be able to zoom in on that. Also picked up this beast. My wrist is about to fall off. See that? That's permanent from wearing officers, especially heavy ones. So this little mark that's permanent on my wrist, it's from literally wearing heavy offshores. Anna stole my uh, Ferrari, so we're gonna have to walk back to the booth. So it's the close of day two here at the Miami Antique Show. So far, the numbers are looking phenomenal. Everything is selling and it's flying off the shelves. Oddly enough, my biggest fear is by the time we get to IWJG, I don't know how much we'll have left to sell. Surprise, this is still here because this is super rare. Here you go. Just make sure that they stack in well though. With that said, tomorrow is Saturday. We got Saturday and Sunday, and then we're off to IWJG, where we're gonna kick ass and take names. That's all for now, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. This is Muhammad. This is our friend, came from Oman. We're gonna do a lot of business with Muhammad. We're gonna buy stuff from him, we're gonna sell stuff to him. I started with his father when Mohammed crawled under the table. He was a little boy when I started with his dad. Now he's a grown man, the most knowledgeable man in Oman. You guys remember my very good friend Mohammed from a video when I went to Oman. Finally made it to the United States. I've been trying to make it out to the Middle East. We haven't seen each other in two years. And that kind of sucks when not only is he somebody that we do big business with, but he's also a friend. Excuse me. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Follow me. I'm gonna go slow so you don't need to run. <laughs> Nobody can stop me. I am the king. The king is dead. I am the king. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Which one is it, Miriam? Right here. Ah, that's the Victoria. Yeah, it's the same thing. Miriam, how much is it? I'll just be honest with you. I bought it at auction. Cost me plus 20% for the hammer thing. It's a beautiful necklace. It's a Victoria collection. This was Tiffany Victoria collection. It's one of the better collections that Tiffany produces. You have to give me a little more than what I paid for it for a trade, right? I'll study it more. You want to go and finish up? Maybe we'll make a trade. Okay. Does the earrings come with the with the necklace? Sure. Huh? Yeah. Yes, those are real diamonds, and each one of those earrings is 25 carats. That's what you want? I That's love her. I love her. Sure, whatever she wants. It's my girlfriend. 25 carats My wife. Where's my, um, the wife has to be my girlfriend then. How about little things like this for the store? Look, come here. Come here. I've got you. You sell men's jewelry? No. Huh? I don't like men. You don't like men? No. I offered her men's jewelry and she said, I don't like men. I said, you're not gonna be my girlfriend. What is that? This is a necklace. It's nobody though, right? No. This is Odelia. No. This is hot. Diaper pins? Diaper pins. I like that one. This is good for the store. Yeah. That was cute. Me, myself, I like to sell Big stuff. I know. Poor folks should wear jewelry too, right? <laughs> Cute. It's pretty. If you're gonna let me wear the stuff for a month, I'm, I'm gonna abuse my ears. Okay, you can have them for longer if you want. Come, I'll show you some nice pieces. Okay, I'm nervous. 1800 bucks, 1700. 
You can buy the mounting for 1700. 25, I think he said. Okay, 2500. I don't remember, maybe he even said 22. 25, I said 27. <laughs> 25. And how much is this one? This one is 4500. I think you said 44. Can you make this one cheaper? 4200. Miriam is a very, very nice lady. That's a pretty pen. Cheap, 6000. It's the stone is worth six thousand dollars. How much is this little one? Nine hundred. It's for nothing. Yeah. She's a, she's a piece unique. They don't make them like that. The, the color is so light. It's light. It's not real blue. I mean, listen, uh, the, the real like, blue. It's twenty-five thousand dollars, but this is good enough. For six grand, Miriam, it comes up to like 50 bucks a carat for Akka. What can you buy? I like to steal stuff. 5,900, so. <laughs> for half a day, you know, we're negotiating this deal. She, she picked some jewelry from us. At the end, we flipped the coin for a thousand dollars. And of course, Miriam won. And that was the deal. You selling it? I need to thousand dollars for it. So Gary comes over and asks me to get some good pictures of the necklace that he just purchased. And then Anna, aka Mrs. Sharf, comes out out of nowhere and tries to steal it from me. I took my necklace on to put this on. Why and are you putting this on? You did? Yeah, you so did see this, right? Take it off right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm Yo, I got reflexes. It actually makes you look fat. <laughs> Take it off. Nobody gets the necklace. We'll see about that. But it's all in good fun. We actually love each other. Yet. It's all fun and games so somebody loses night. Yeah, yeah. This is a shotgun. Uh, it's a what? It's a shotgun. shotgun. That's, a sh shotgun. That's a gun I do not have, I must say. <laughs> I have every gun under the sun, I don't have this one. Mohammed has a market for everything. By this time, all my friends in the business and YouTubers have made their way to Miami. Paul Thor showed up, Spencer and Gavin showed up from London. You will yeah, love this piece. The more oh, sure. Anything, but... I sold about 20 of these when they first came out. I transferred. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool, isn't it? That's easy. I love this piece. Yeah, I'm this is like modern. This is modern. Yeah, this yeah. Is yeah. yeah. But it's still uh, yeah. it's available. With the Sanskrit. Yeah. <laughs> still a hot piece. <laughs> what are they fetching here? Around the 400,000 mark. Better. Yeah. All right. Really? I'm gonna, I'll let you know. It may be a watch I'll do here. Yeah. We'll see what's going on. David Khalil was there with his father in law. Anthony flew in from Texas. Nico was missing because Nico decided to fly out back to LA to shoot another video that very day. So unfortunately he couldn't join us for dinner. So he's been showing this watch. Now, when he bought this, I called him up and I'm very straightforward. And I'm like, what the f is wrong with you? I said, how would you park so much money in this watch? Because we, know, we all know what GP is. And of course, the highlight of that was the one and a half million dollar Gerard Perigo that Anthony brought along. Yeah. Mind you, it's been 30 days. Watch on his wrist. Lorietta. You know how many dealers already asked me about it? GP, it's a closeout. But it just goes to show the power of influence, right? He starts pumping that watch. I had 14 inquiries from dealers. Hey, do you still have the GP closeouts you used to have? Do you still have the GP? Now dealers are saying, hey, what do you think the value of this is? Can I pay this for this now? Can monster. But all of a sudden, I see the price go tick, 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 tick. And it took one video from supposedly a guy everybody hates. And now all the dealers just, what are they doing? They're hating, but they're following suit. Now buying them. If I bought this and I brought this into the office, AJ would probably physically hurt me. Wouldn't you say? No comment. No comment. <laughs> it was a great time. It was great to take the bunch, host them, take them out to a good dinner, sit down, shoot the shit. Guess how many Instagram photos were taken at that table that night? That's my baby. What happened to your lips in LA? What were you doing over there? <laughs> and Nico finally makes his way into the antique show. He broke out the glove. Oh, I'm ready. I'm shopping. 
This is how you do business without having any money. Is it, buddy? Yeah. It's a Miami edition perpetual calendar. It's an equation of time, Anthony. It is a perpetual good, good calendar. Test. No. It is. So what the, what is the functionality of an equation of time? What does it do? It measures the second the act the true seconds of time between oh, actually. You're close. I don't close. Know how to explain you, it, but it's, it's like within ten. It shows it's, you the difference between mean and solo time. <laughs> yes, that's the words. But Based it's a true, true, true time. It's a true time. Yes, yes. yes. Nico, Nico's like, hey, 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 hey. I had the shark. <laughs> <laughs> the equation of time, a complication in the watch that's often not understood and very, very underrated. It's very complex to include that into a watch. Check out some of my older videos or what's on my desk where I talked about the equation of times and it will explain that in depth. Saru, for me. Okay, perpetual calendar. Can I see that one? Damn, look at the rotor. Please this is full set? Those. Yeah. It's, it's the most underrated complication that's out there today. Most people don't understand it. And it's full set? It is a full set. I'll take this. So, two. Bought a watch, finally. I love your f***ing enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, oh. Finally. Oh, 5212. Do we have the picture of the papers of the 5270 Platinum? Nico is a bit of a walking encyclopedia when it comes to watches and movements. He does tend to get geeky, but he also didn't know what an equation of time does exactly. This is special. First new yeah. calendar complication I mean, introduced since 1996. It and it's the first you know, ever new calendar complication introduced in steel oh. instead of precious metal. That is some fucking watch. What? This watch will have the future. How about this? What's the story? What's so special about this now? This is a, this is extremely special. We call this enamel. Thanks, Nico. We call this enamel, Captain Obvious. This dial is made out of enamel. It's an ena it's, I can't even explain to you how complicated, way, how that's difficult not, that's this is. That's not what I was referring to. You know, but, it's discontinued, right? Yeah, it's gone. Fifty-two yeah. thirty-one. That's yeah, it. I know. I know. That's why everyone all of a sudden wants to buy it. That's my baby. I'm gonna sell it. That's yeah, my watch. I lick it, I kiss it, do all of it. Everything. It's my anyway. watch. It's my baby. So what well, the cool thing is, right? I would wear that a little bit oversized. So three, I love four. It. I got all these YouTubers selling my watches. This is great. Where's He's Lucer? So, hard. so you can wear it, wear it dressed up and rest, dressed down, right? Yeah. Formal dress He's or casual. Right that, that's what I like. Nico, you're hired. I know. <laughs> Nico, I gotta get your reaction on this, bro. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. What is this? Brick. Look close. It's a brick. Look what closer. Let me, see. Let me see. <laughs> Look closer. Let me see before you say anything. What do you think this is? I'll tell you guys. This used to be a rubber flag with a newer dial. Somebody polished off the rubber and put it on a new style bracelet. What the hell? What, what, what do we say, uh, Nico? You, my friend, have been yeah. penetrated from behind without a condom. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what a fun, fun antique show. Uh, usually when I go to trade shows, they're extremely tiring. I'm on my feet 10 hours a day. I get up early. I go out to dinner with clients, with colleagues, etc. And I usually look forward to them ending. This is the one antique show I did not want to end. We were doing business from morning till night. We did a tremendous amount of business. In fact, it was a record show ever. We did close to $5 million in business in the four days we were there. Outside of that, whole YouTube gang was together. It was awesome to have Nico, Anthony, Paul, Spencer, David Khalil, Tim Wright was there as well. Uh, watch Eric was skiing in the freaking mountains. But you will see him in the next episode because we're off to the IWJG show, which will be its own episode altogether. Lots of fun, lots more deal, guys. Like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned.